How to make a human. If you're already an adult and everything is legal and consensual, creating a human isn't really a big deal. But what if you're low on energy and want to create a person all by yourself? Is that even possible? In terms of the recipe, yes. After all, humans are made of stardust. The hydrogen atoms in your body are relics from the first three minutes after the Big Bang. The iron in your blood was forged in the death of a supernova. You have around seven octillion atoms. They once drifted across the universe, and now, by some cosmic coincidence, they've come together to become you. So, making a human just means rearranging the material of the universe. What ingredients do you need for this cosmic recipe? The raw materials are simple. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, plus a bit of calcium, phosphorus, and trace elements. Just like cooking, the ingredients are basic, but the proportions and technique determine whether it's Michelin-worthy. Same with humans. It's how the elements combine that makes you instead of a lifeless lump. First, water. People say women are made of water, but that's not quite right. Men actually contain more water. In any life form, water dominates. Oxygen and water fuels the fire of life, your breathing and metabolism. You consume nearly 750 grams of oxygen every 24 hours. Buying that much pure oxygen would cost about $30. Hydrogen, though light, is everywhere and makes up more than half of all atoms in the human body. It holds organic molecules together. You need $300 worth of it. Next, the bricks of life carbon. You might ask, since I'm making a person, why not go for a cooler silicon-based life form? The reason is, carbon is highly social. It forms stable bonds with many elements and can link with itself to form chains and rings, building all kinds of complex organic molecules. Silicon, on the other hand, is clingy and less flexible. Expose it to oxygen, and it turns into sand. Your life form would fossilize before it lives. Carbon isn't cheap, though. It'll cost you around $43,000. To make proteins and genes, you'll also need some nitrogen, which is much cheaper, just $2.50. But without it, you can't even send instructions to make proteins. Creating a human isn't like crafting slime. You need a skeleton to support the body. That's where calcium and phosphorus from rocks come in. Calcium lets you stand. Phosphorus helps assemble DNA and powers your cell's energy currency, ADP. Though needed in small amounts, they cost $46,000. Pricey, yes, but they're your hardcore structure. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. These textbook elements are your body's main ingredients, making up 99% of your weight. But don't forget the seasoning, small but essential elements. Potassium and sodium in your tears act like internal batteries, controlling nerve signals. Chlorine forms stomach acid. There's also sulfur, magnesium, zinc, selenium, copper. They may sound like a vitamin ad, but without these 24 essential elements, life can't function. See, the ingredients for making a person are everywhere. Some dirt, some water, some air, and you've got your elements set. The cost, about 1 million US dollars to get pure, isolated elements, but just dumping them together won't work. You need the right method to assemble them into organic molecules. It's not difficult, it just takes billions of years. Earth once made its own primordial soup. We all studied this in high school. Mix methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water, zap it with a little lightning, and you can cook up amino acid from inorganic matter. Larger hydrothermal vents are like natural pressure cookers, using temperature and chemical gradients to keep producing organic molecules. Once you have the basic building blocks, it's time to assemble. Proteins, RNA, DNA. These large molecules are made by linking small ones. Take proteins, the workhorses of life. Amino acids connect via peptide bonds and fold into complex 3D shapes with various functions. It sounds complex, but really, it just takes patience and repeated low heat cooking. High heat can help amino acids form protein-like polypeptides. But don't get too excited. In Earth's early primordial soup, there were all sorts of amino acids, but life only picked 20 standard ones to build proteins. Why? Maybe because proteins and cells do everything. Act as enzymes, hormones, antibodies. Only the toughest could survive. Next, you need the blueprint for life, DNA and RNA. DNA's double helix structure holds genetic information encoded in four letters, passed down generation by generation. RNA is usually single-stranded and acts as a copy and executor of DNA's instructions. 
If a cell were a factory, DNA is the manual, RNA the messenger and worker, and proteins the machines built for the manual. This is the central dogma of biology. But here comes the chicken and egg problem. Proteins are made using instructions from DNA, but DNA replication needs protein enzymes. So which came first? Science proposes the RNA world hypothesis, that certain RNA molecules randomly gain the ability to replicate themselves. Proteins joined in to help with various reactions. Eventually, DNA emerged, more stable and less error prone. RNA handed over the role of genetic memory to DNA and stepped back to pass on messages. Only proteins kept doing hard labor. Sounds like everything's ready, but remember, you don't have billions of years to wait around for lightning to strike. Still, we've already stepped into the realm of the gods. In 2010, scientist Craig Venter designed a genome on a computer, inserted it into an empty cell, and got it to self-replicate, creating the first artificial cell. Later, they created a streamlined version with just 473 genes. But even then, about 30% of those genes had unknown functions, and removing them broke everything. In the human genome, mysterious dark genes make up 98%. So even with the full recipe, life still holds secrets we can't explain, and synthetic biology is still stuck at the microbial level. To really build a human, we need to figure out how to create tissues and organs and make them work together, let alone how to construct consciousness in a nervous system. So just go to sleep. You're better off making a baby the old-fashioned way, under the covers. After all, it took countless extinctions and cosmic accidents for stardust to become you and me. Those tiny amino acids that swirled in the primordial soup never imagined they'd one day become you, a being that can dream and think. In the end, life is a miracle born of chance. The secret hidden in stardust continues to tease our curiosity. If stardust can become you and me, then surely the stars still hold the next miracle.